In today's tutorial let me show you how to do this miniature pumpkin. This is the larger size of the two miniatures that we have here on YouTube and this is super super cute. We're gonna start that right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the large pumpkin of the two miniatures that are here and I see it right there. It only asks for one in this whole project and we're going to be teaching this one here from this instruction right down to here. And we're also later on in another tutorial we're gonna do the smaller versions which are even smaller and you can whip these off pretty quickly. To play along with me today you'll need a size G 4 millimeter crochet hook today. It, you can use the Lily Sugar and Cream Cotton has all the colors that you need here in the pattern but I'm going to be using the Bernat Super Value in order to do it. This color is actually called Pumpkin. So without further ado let's get started. Grab your crochet hook and let's get this thing rolling. So let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot and if you need help with any further tutorials of course we have those here on YouTube. This is for the small pumpkin. So let's begin. It says to chain four. Remember size G four millimeter crochet hook. Remember also too the slip knot never counts as one. So one, two, three and four and let's just join it to the beginning chain. Yarn over and pull through to form the center ring. I know it's tight but we need it tight for this particular project. Let's begin round number one. Simply chain one and then inside the interior of the ring put in eight single crochets. So just go right into the center and single crochet as normal and count those out. So it's one and we have two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And once you have your eight done just join it to the beginning single crochet with a slip stitch. And that concludes round number one. Let's move up to second round just chain up one and it says to put in two single crochets in each stitch going all the way around. So just starting right at the base of that one and put in two single crochets there. And I like to make sure I don't lose count so I will count this. So I will say this is one even though I just put in two single crochets and the next one I will say after I get two done I will say it's two. Next one after I get two done I'll say it's three and four. Five, and six for two, and seven, and eight. And once you have that done, please just join it to the top of the beginning single crochet, just like that. Let's move up to round number three chain one and it says to do one single crochet in the next stitch and then two single crochets in the, the next stitch and keep repeating that. So going into the first one, one single crochet and then the next one will have two single crochets. Okay, the next one is gonna be one single crochet and then the next one is gonna be two single crochets. Continue that same patterning going all the way around. If your counts are right the last one will be two single crochets in order to keep it in balance. Just join it to the beginning single crochet. So that's what it looks like so far. So, so far it's flat and I'm assuming that it's gonna start uh, bowling up real soon. Let's begin rounds four and five. They're both identical to each other. We're gonna chain up one and it will be one single crochet in each one of the stitches going all the way around. So we wanna do that for rounds four and five. So please do this for rounds four and five. Just one single crochet into each and then I'll meet you back up and we'll complete number six. I've now completed rounds four and five so it's starting to bowl up just like this and that's excellent. So now we're gonna start doing a decrease. So this is the halfway point in the pumpkin itself. So we're gonna chain up one first and it says to single crochet two together and then one single crochet in each of the next two. So what this means is that the first one and the next one are two together. So let me explain that to you just in case. Insert your hook in, pull through 
insert your hook into the next stitch, pull through, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three and that's it together and then the next two are just one single crochet each and then a two together again. So in, pull through, go to the next stitch, pull through and then pull through all three. Continue that same patterning so it's two single crochets in a row and then two together and do that all the way around. I'm coming up all the way back around. I only have two stitches left and those should just be one single crochet each and that should be in balance with your whole pattern anyway. So if that's not what you're ending up with you know that your counts are wrong. Please slip stitch to the top of the beginning two together just like you started. Let's begin round number seven chaining one. So we're going to do two together for the first two. So go into the first one, pull through, next one pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over pull through all three loops and then one single crochet into the next. So the repeat pattern on this round is two together. So that pull through, go into the next one, pull through and then the next one is one single crochet. Do that all the way around. I'm coming up all the way back around and I should end up with one single crochet to finish and then I just join it to the top of the first two together. Grab our stuffing and let's uh, put a little bit of stuffing. Don't overstuff it. This is not meant to be an orange. So we wanna kinda lightly stuff it so it keeps its uh, integrity as a pumpkin. I've now added my stuffing in and now it's time for the next round. So the next round, I think this is kinda tangled. Let me just think. yep. I, could, I couldn't pull it through. That's how I knew that was tangled. So there we go. Good. So we're going to go up to round number eight and round number eight says to chain one it says single crochet two together six times. So basically at this point um, every stitch is going to turn into, every two stitches is gonna turn into one. So just going in to two stitches and make them into one. Just watch that stuffing. It doesn't catch into the fibers of your project because it will stick out just like it does there. So you can kind of just clean it up afterward but if you can avoid it, it's less work for you in the end. So just going two together each stitch or for each one of these all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I just wanna slip stitch and now there should be only six stitches left. So the next one round, round number nine is the putting the six together. So just chain up one first and then the next two are two together. So do this uh, for a total of three times and that will bring it almost to a conclusion and then we're gonna start doing the stem which is really quite easy to do as well. So now that I've come all the way back around I want to do um, just a fasten off. So this is the bottom of the pumpkin that we're finishing off. This is the top and you can see it looks a lot nicer on the top side anyway and I think it's just the way it's been decreased and, and I saw that in other pumpkins so I think it's just the nature of the beast. So we're just gonna trim the yarn and I want to fasten this off. Now you can use a darning needle and really do a nice job of just kind of finishing this but we still have a finishing technique. If you look at the picture it looks like there's ridges of a pumpkin and we're gonna be able to get that done. So I'm just, I want to do a nice job on this. So I'm going to use a darning needle and just kind of just finish this off a little bit nicer than just kind of what I did. Again this is where the creativity um, and the pattern kind of separates. So you can do your own thing if you want to. So we're gonna do the stem next and then we're going to then um, do the, the framing of it which is kind of gonna give it the ridges because right now it just looks like a ball but we want it to look like a pumpkin and that will be done right after this. So I wanna do the stem next. It's so simple, it's not even funny. I thought I was actually missing instructions because it's that simple. So we have to start off with the, I'm gonna use a brown color and it says the stem and make one for each pumpkin obviously. <laughs> so what we have is that we're going to chain three. Remember that the slip knot never counts as one. So one, two and three. Come into the second chain from the hook and slip stitch and then come into the last, um, sti uh, last chain and slip stitch and that's it. That is your stem. Isn't that crazy stuff? So I'm just gonna leave an extra long tail so I can sew it to the top of the pumpkin but we don't wanna sew it to the top of the pumpkin yet. And uh, we can get rid of this nice end. So here is the stem and you know what? It's in proportion to the pumpkin so that just totally makes sense. So let's uh, do the finishing technique of getting the pumpkin shape. I haven't done this before so I'm kinda scared. So now we're gonna make the ridges of the pumpkin. So on one side I wanna create a slip knot just to kind of secure it. 
and we're going to be using a darning needle for this and then the other side is gonna obviously be the needle. So let's uh, get in there and I wanna come up from the bottom side to start and so you can see how different it looks on the one side. This is what we finished versus the side that we started with. So coming up through the bottom up here, come right back to the top. I'm coming right into the center and what you have to do is that you have to go around the pumpkin. Okay, so let me pull all this strand in and I wanna go through this slip knot and that'll X secure it and I wanna keep that slip knot underneath right here. I made this a little bit longer so I can hide that and we wanna pull this tight enough so that it gets a ridge looking shape. Okay, and it may take a little bit getting used to. Once you get that then you're just gonna come up through the bottom once again and it says to do only five ridges so that was one of five and you can perfect it as you go and now you're just gonna go down a side of a different part and then back up through the inside once again back to the top. And I'm coming up the same space just to be consistent. Okay, I'm, not, I'm reefing on it. So I'm gonna come up around again. This is gonna make it flatten off as you can see. And I'm gonna come up through the middle and then tighten that one. around. Again this is up to your creativity. It says only to do five but if you wanna do more. You know, if you, you wanna change the tinge of your, your yarn you could have done that too. I might actually do six. And you can always shift these lines around too if they're not equal. And I notice this one's kinda loose so I'm gonna go back over it another time with another strand. I don't think there's any crochet police watching me right now. <laughs> I just tighten it off. And then I think I'm going to go right there. So make up your own rules when it comes to crochet and this is kinda how you get that shape without any fancy footwork at all. And you can have a lot of fun with it at the same time. Okay, so once you get that done, so I'm gonna go back down through the middle into the, and I'm gonna secure it on the other side, the, the bottom side. Now this is my first one I've ever done. So I think, I would assume that any time I do the second one, the second one's always easier, easier to make. And I know the things to look for. So I think that if I'm goofing off on this one that I can always do the ne next one a lot easier. So I'm just gonna slide in my needle back and forth three times to secure it extra. So one. And then I go in a different spot. Two and go into a different spot for three. And now I can safely trim that yarn. And now because I left the other yarn a little bit longer, what I can do, stick in the needle partially and the idea is just to pull this straggler so it's through the pumpkin so the loose end never shows. Like this. And pull through. Okay. And I can always use my crochet hook to move stuff around if I have to. I'm gonna pull one of these strings. I did two here. And I'm just gonna pull it around a little bit. Like so. 
Okay, so now what I can do is that I can grab my stem and just put in my darning needle once again. And just go down through the center right on the top side. And I'll pull my stem in. And then I'm gonna come back up a different section, sorry. Forget you were down there watching. And I'm just gonna grab the needle and just kinda poke it through somewhere else in the stem just to kinda secure it. And I'm gonna secure this back on the inner side for obvious reasons. How cute is that? So now I'm just gonna come on the underside here and just kind of secure the string in. So this is used on a wreath. Most of the times that this kind of stuff in the back is never shown anyway. But the way that I'm doing it on the bottom side is that you could have it sitting somewhere too and you, unless somebody grabs it and turns it upside down they won't see it. And if they do grab it, it means they loved your creativity so much that they had to touch it. <laughs> Just go for that. So now this other strand that I purposely left a little bit longer, I'm just gonna pull through the pumpkin. And again, I'm doing this all on camera live. I've never done it before so I would think that if I was not on camera I could take my time a little bit more. So I'm just gonna pull this through. Okay, it's coming out through the bottom and then I can just trim that. And that would be my miniature pumpkin like so. So that concludes today's tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me on behalf of Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. This is the large one of the two for the miniature pumpkins. Until next time, we'll see ya. Bye bye.